amazing story of the splitting of the Red Sea. The Jewish people are trapped between Pharaoh's army and the sea. And they turn to Moses and they say, Moses, what are we doing? Weren't there enough graves in Egypt for us to die in? Why did you have to bring us out here into the wilderness to die? And Moses turns to the Jewish people and says, no, everything will be okay. God will perform wonders and miracles and signs. And then we find in the Torah where God speaks to Moses. And he says, Moses, why are you crying out to me? Speak to the children of Israel and let them journey forth. And you lift up your staff and stretch out your arm over the sea and I will split it. And the children of Israel shall come into the midst of the sea on dry land. What's so amazing about this is you do not see that Moses is crying out to God. It's an amazing thing. Moses is providing encouragement for the Jewish people. And then God comes and says, Moses, why are you crying out to me for? So evidently, if the Torah is chastising Moses for crying out to God, then Moses was praying. Which, by the way, teaches you that you can have a discussion with other people while still praying and having a discussion to God. Really a remarkable thing. As a matter of fact, there's a, there's a story told of the Briska Rav. He's a great rabbi, lived a couple hundred years ago. He was famous for, while he was in an appointment with other people, he would be sitting there speaking with them and stopping and praying to God, saying, God, please help me say the right thing to these people. Please help me guide them in the right path. But nonetheless, there's another message that the Torah is telling us. And that is, there's a time for prayer and there's a time for action. And it's not exactly like those who wish to say, God helps those who help themselves. It's not exactly like that. It means that action is an aspect of prayer. That Moses was praying for the salvation of the Jewish people. And part of the salvation of the Jewish people meant, I have to encourage the Jewish people and calm them. And it also means, according to God's directive, now is the time to take your staff, put it in the sea, cause the sea to split. Now, when does the sea actually split? Not until a man by the name of Nachshon ben Nadav stands up and goes into the sea himself. Now, how far does he go, to the sea, go into the sea? Well, the Medrash discusses how it literally went, you know, this far, like kind of the top of his head, the top of his neck. And then all of a sudden the sea split. Now, you would think that if God is going to split the sea, split the sea, make a dry land, and then say, okay, everyone, go ahead. Why is it that the sea does not split until Nachshon goes in? Again, it's another spiritual principle. That the Almighty wants us to live like He is running the world. If we live like God's running the world, and sometimes that means getting a little wet, sometimes it means doing the uncomfortable thing, if we live that way, then we will see that God, in fact, does run the world. The Almighty, that was part of the test that God put the Jewish people in. And so next time we find ourselves in a situation of difficulty, we have to remember, stay calm, know that God's running the world and everything will be fine. We have to ask the Almighty for help, and then we have to look for directive in terms of what action do we do that we can show God that we know that he's running the world. But it is an action. It's not just a talk. It's not just a discussion. It will be taking those concepts and putting them into action in the future. Let's take this to a whole nother level. The Chafetz Chaim, who was one of the greatest rabbis who lived in the past 120 years or so, so he described that God runs the world in three ways. The first way that God runs the world is Bederech Teva. It's the pathway of nature. If I take a ball, throw it in the air, it comes down. Whatever I see is, the rain falls on the ground, get enough rain, the grass is going to grow, and that will support the animals that are grazing. There's nothing out of the ordinary. Everything can be planned out. Whatever was, was. Whatever is, is. The third way that God runs the world is through miracles. These are specifically the miracles that happened in the Bible. The splitting of the sea, the manna coming down from heaven. These are things that do not happen normally and might never actually happen again. They are things that we certainly do not rely on in our daily life. But there's an in-between level, the second level. That would be Bederech Bracha, the pathway of blessing. 
This is that we look at things in a certain way, and then God sends us a little more. How much more? Not so much more that we would say, oh my gosh, it's a miracle, it's a miracle. But we know it's beyond what natural means would cause us to expect. Now, if we look at Nachshon ben Aminadav, you ask, where did he get the courage to jump into the sea and start walking through in a calm way? He wasn't fleeing from the Egyptians into the sea. He was going because God commanded Moses to command the Jewish people to go in the sea. And he said, I'm going in the sea. Ah, Nachshon, it did not split yet. How did you know it would split? It's very simple. He looked at what had been going on in the past year of his life. The ten plagues in Egypt, the, uh, the pillar of, of fire and the column of smoke. These things that were already going on, Nachshon had reliance that if God was taking care of me yesterday, he will take care of me right now. And that, sure enough, is one of the key principles in terms of trust in God. Nachshon exhibited that. He had the confidence that God took care of him yesterday, therefore God will take care of him today. And that allowed him to take some very bold steps to help lead the Jewish people towards their future. So for us, we should not rely on miracles, but we should also not rely that there is only nature and what you see is always what you get. But rather with a relationship with the Almighty, by praying to God, asking for direction and having confidence that just as he took care of us yesterday, he will take care of us today and tomorrow. We will have the confidence to live with faith and take even more bold steps towards the future for ourselves and a great Jewish people. I'm Rabbi Yitzwein, the Young Israel Asian Las Vegas.